Greetings, health enthusiasts. You are tuning in to Reverse Reset Restore, your go to source for all things related to optimizing your health and vitality and creating opportunities for you to fall in love with your incredible self. Do you feel like you've forgotten how to do that? I gotcha. Come with me as we shine a spotlight on cortisol, the unsung hero, or in this case, the villain of our body's stress response system. Change comes from within. Welcome back to our special series on cortisol. This is the second episode in a six part series that is running over the next six months. One episode at the start of the month that is dedicated to cortisol and its impact on various areas of our body. Last month, we took a look at how cortisol impacts our immune system. If you want to have a better understanding of this dynamic, check out that episode. I've added the link into the show notes. In today's episode, we're looking at how this stress hormone can bludgeon our self-confidence and leave you feeling stuck in a body that you may struggle to love. Well, at least that's been the relationship I've had with my body, and it remains a source of contention some days, if I'm going to be honest. We're discussing the significant impacts excess cortisol can have on weight and metabolism. We live in a world of bias and judgments and, unfortunately, a growing lack of empathy. Despite access to resources and knowledge more than any other time in our history, if you are overweight or obese, unfortunately, this judgment can be brutal. People will take one look at you and deem you unattractive or lazy or a myriad of other things, sometimes right to your face. They assume that the reason for your extra layers is because you go around like Pac-Man gobbling up everything in sight while trying to avoid the ghosts of exercise, low-fat food and self-control. And yeah, sure, poor food choices and low motivation and not building physical activity into your day are, in part, contributing factors in being overweight. But what if... It isn't just about what's on your plate. What if there's more to it than moving around? What if one of the main reasons you are overweight has nothing to do with food or how much you exercise or don't and everything to do with your body living under the strain of excess cortisol? Sean Talbot, author of The Cortisol Connection, why stress makes you fat and ruins your health and what you can do about it, says stress makes a person fat primarily because of an excessive secretion of the key stress hormone cortisol, along with a reduced secretion of key anabolic hormones such as DHEA, testosterone and growth hormone. This combination of highly catabolic cortisol and reduced anabolic hormones cause the body to store fat, lose muscle, slow metabolic rate and increase appetite, all of which have the ultimate effect of making a person fatter. If your weight seems to be the Achilles heel in your life, you, my friend, are not alone. Let's talk some statistics to reiterate that you are not as alone as you may think or feel you are. According to the American Psychological Association's Stress in America survey, 38% of adults reported overeating or eating unhealthy foods in response to stress. I call this eating my feelings. And it's something I have found myself doing as a coping mechanism or to try to drown out the uncomfortable feelings or thoughts that I didn't really want to pay attention to. So my eating my feelings maximize the advantage of a stressful moment. Another study published in the journal Obesity found that individuals who reported high stress levels were more likely to have obesity compared to those with lower stress levels. And there is some bad but obvious news for us women. So women may be more susceptible to stress-related weight gain than men. And research suggests that women are more likely to use food as a coping mechanism during times of stress. Hello again, eating my feelings. 
A study published in the International Journal of Obesity found that women who reported high stress levels had a significantly higher likelihood of weight gain compared to men with similar stress levels. And age also plays its part. Stress-related weight gain can affect individuals of all ages, but the impact may vary depending on life stage and age-related factors. Young adults and middle-aged individuals may be particularly vulnerable to stress-related weight gain due to the combination of lifestyle stresses such as work or school pressure and hormonal changes. But older adults don't get off scot-free either as they may also experience stress-related weight gain, especially if they are dealing with age-related health issues or major life changes such as retirement or caregiving responsibilities. A study published in the Journal of Behavioral Medicine found that stress was associated with greater increases in body mass index BMI among young adults aged 18 to 29 compared to adults aged 50 to 64. However, older adults may be more prone to abdominal obesity and metabolic syndrome as a result of chronic stress, according to research published in the Journal of Aging Research. And long-term trends Longitude studies have shown that chronic stress over time can contribute to gradual weight gain and obesity risk across all age groups and genders. A meta-analysis published in the Annals of Behavioral Medicine found that chronic stress was associated with a significant increase in BMI over time, highlighting the cumulative effect of stress on weight gain. These statistics underscore the significant impact of stress on weight gain and obesity risk, and understanding these trends can inform targeted interventions and support strategies to mitigate stress-related weight gain and promote overall health and well-being. When cortisol levels remain elevated for prolonged periods due to chronic stress, it can lead to various physiological changes that contribute to weight gain and difficulty in losing weight. Slowed metabolism. Chronic stress and elevated cortisol levels can impair metabolic function, leading to a slowdown in metabolism and reduced calorie expenditure, which is just a fancy way of saying that things are not going to burn off as quickly as they used to. Here's three ways that excess cortisol impacts weight and some strategies to help mitigate its effect. Increased appetite and cravings. So research has shown that high cortisol levels can stimulate appetite and cravings, particularly for foods that are high in sugar, fat, and calories. This can lead to overeating and weight gain over time. A study published in the journal Psychoneuroendocrinology found that individuals with higher cortisol levels had a greater preference for high fat foods and reported more frequent episodes of overeating compared to those with lower cortisol levels. Dr. Susan K. Fried is a professor of endocrinology, diabetes, and metabolism at the Eichen School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. She states, Cortisol can directly influence the brain's regulation of appetite and cravings, leading to increased consumption of calorie-dense foods. So can I just say here that I want to make this clear that even though you may be eating the wrong things, and I do it too, I eat, you know, I crave things that are not going to fuel my body in a healthy way. But it's interesting to note that when you are running with excess cortisol flooding through your system, that what that does is it naturally kind of makes you crave these high fat, unhealthy sort of foods that we tend to reach for. I mean, no one reaches for a salad when they're feeling down, right? Or when they're feeling stressed. Do you want comfort? Comfort doesn't come in a salad bowl. And I love salads, but it's not a comfort food, you know? But the things that we know are comfort foods are the things that are going to continue to perpetuate the cycle that we're in. I just want you to really hear this. If this is you, if this is what's going on in your life, and I'm speaking to myself here, give yourself some grace about the food choices that you're making because part of it is actually driven by your cortisol levels that are surging through your body, wanting that quick fix, wanting that comfort food, not going, oh, hey, order up a salad. You know, that's going to make me feel complete and whole as a human being. 
not saying that donuts or pizza or burgers or chips or whatever your poison is. I just want you to give yourself a breath and be kind because it's really easy for us to be very harsh on ourselves about the food choices that we make especially when you are battling with the way that you feel about your body or how much excess weight you might be carrying around and you know that it is impacting your life you know that it's hurting your joints or making it hard to do things or feel good or sleep or all of those things we know this Anyone who is overweight knows this about their own body. And unfortunately, sometimes we avoid it by just, you know, shoving it down with more food. Just think that for a moment that some of the choices that you're making with the food that you're putting into your mouth is not necessarily just because you're making bad or lazy choices. It could actually be because it's been instigated by that internal drive of the excess cortisol crying out for the very things that we know are just going to continue to perpetuate that hurt and that pain. Does that make sense? I think for me, realizing that, oh, my desires for some foods that I know are going to hurt me may not really just be a decision I make on a logical level, but also that it's a biological level that is driving that decision as well. And I think when we come to that realization, it makes it easier to not only forgive ourselves or to recognize that, okay, some of these things I've not been aware of now, but now that I am aware that my hormones might be driving this desire to eat that burger or to buy that thick shake or whatever it is, you know, that you can now have the empowerment to make a different choice. So here are a couple of strategies that you could put in place. Practice stress reducing techniques such as mindfulness, deep breathing, yoga or meditation to help lower cortisol levels and reduce your cravings. Focus on a balanced diet rich in fruits and vegetables and proteins and whole grains to provide essential nutrients and promote satiety. A really good rule of thumb is if you're going shopping at the supermarket, avoid the aisles skirt around the edges of the supermarket where all of the fresh produce and products tend to be and keep healthy snacks readily available to prevent reaching for high calorie processed foods during periods of stress. Also to counterbalance that as well as having healthy snacks available to you remove unhealthy snacks from being readily available as well. If you don't have it in your house or in your car or in your purse or in places at work you're more likely to be able to push through that craving. Abdominal fat accumulation. So excess cortisol has been associated with the accumulation of visceral fat, particularly around the abdomen. Now visceral fat is more metabolically active and has been linked to an increased risk of cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes and other health conditions. A study published in the journal Psychosomatic Medicine found that individuals with higher cortisol levels tended to have greater abdominal fat deposition compared to those with lower cortisol levels, even after controlling for factors such as age, sex and BMI. Dr. Sarah Jackson, a researcher at University College London, stated, Elevated cortisol levels can promote the storage of fat in the abdominal region, which is associated with a higher risk of metabolic syndrome and cardiovascular disease. So here are a few strategies to combat this. Engage in regular physical activity, including both aerobic exercise and strength training to help reduce abdominal fat and improve overall body composition. Prioritize adequate sleep as insufficient sleep has been shown to increase cortisol levels and promote weight gain, especially around the abdomen. We'll be looking into cortisol and its impact on our sleep in the August episode. Incorporate stress management techniques into your daily routine to lower cortisol levels and prevent the accumulation of visceral fat. A study published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism found that chronic stress was associated with lower metabolic rate and decreased thermogenesis, which could contribute to weight gain over time. Dr. Michael W. Schwartz, a professor of medicine at the University of Washington, stated, Elevated cortisol levels can disrupt metabolic processes in the body, leading to reduced energy expenditure and increased storage of fat. So here are three strategies that you can use to help your metabolism. 
Again, we want to incorporate physical activity here. So you want your strength training exercises, which will boost your metabolism and preserve lean muscle mass, which can help counteract the effects of cortisol on your metabolism. You want to ensure that you're taking an adequate intake of nutrients essential for metabolic functions, such as vitamins B and D, magnesium and omega-3 fatty acids through a balanced diet and, if necessary, supplementation. The third tip here is to prioritize your stress management and relaxation techniques to lower the cortisol levels and support healthy metabolic function. For more strategies, I want you to check out our blog post over on the Reverse Reset Restore website or the video on the Reverse Reset Restore YouTube channel. I'm going to be offering a lot more strategies there. Excess cortisol can contribute to weight gain and metabolic dysfunction through various mechanisms, as we've talked about. And while we've talked about how by incorporating stress-reducing techniques, adopting a balanced diet, engaging in regular physical activity, and prioritizing adequate sleep, you can help mitigate the effects of cortisol on your body, I want to encourage you to do a couple more things. And I recognize that these things can be more challenging than making some lifestyle changes. But this is a lifestyle change that is the most important of all. Firstly, forgive yourself. If you are carrying extra weight and blaming poor self-control or eating your feelings or a food addiction or whatever it is that has led to some self-sabotaging behaviors and ugly thoughts about yourself and your worth, I encourage you to forgive yourself. Hurting yourself by harboring shame or guilt or holding on to all your wise I am not worthy isn't helping anyone. When we begin the internal healing process of self-acceptance and forgiveness, we make space for us to be able to step into doing the other work to heal our bodies. Our relationship with ourself, how we think, how we feel and behave towards who we are, mind, body and soul, only heals when we can come from a place of love. I have spent years hating my body and I punished it. I punished it with exercise. I punished it with not exercising. I punished it with food and withholding food. I tried to ignore it. I called it names. It was probably the most toxic, abusive relationship I've ever been in. And the more I hated my body, the more pain I was in. Physical pain, inflammation, migraines, digestive issues, constant and unending neck pain. And the more pain I felt, the more I hated my body. And this hatred, of course, fueled my cortisol levels. It became this circular cycle, this butterfly effect where my internal pain beget more external pain, which made more internal pain. I think that some of you may know exactly what I'm talking about because this has been your experience too. A few years ago, I started a different conversation with my body. One of practicing love and forgiveness and self-acceptance. And you know what happened? Well, things began to change. Things began to shift. As I have begun to speak lovingly to my body, the pain I experienced on a daily basis diminished. And the need to eat my feelings diminished. I found myself wanting to care for my body. So my lifestyle changes started to happen naturally. I began to seek out exercise that felt good and stopped pushing myself into the ones that didn't bring me joy. I've learned to stop eating my feelings and deal with them instead. I am still a work in progress, okay? And the body that I'm in right now is not the body that I hope to have in another year or more. But instead of expressing anger or hatred or even just mild annoyance with my body and where it is right now. I continue to acknowledge the pain and I love myself through it. I continue to recognize the strength that my body has to carry me through the day. I know that my cortisol levels are still elevated and continue to inflict harm on me as I still carry excess weight and a lot of stress. But with love and time 
and continued efforts on my part to look after my body and to reduce my cortisol load through the strategies I share with you. Things are changing because change comes from within. I think the frustrating thing is that we want change to be immediate, right? We want to see the results now. And this sort of thing, when you're healing from the inside out, it takes time. But it's the best way to do it with love and grace and acceptance. Because so many of us have the struggle with identity and self-worth and food and our weight and just you know, life. (laughs) I would love if you would consider sharing this episode with someone you love that you think could do with a reminder to take some of the pressure off of themselves and learn about how our hormones are playing a role in our weight loss or gain. Join us again next month for the third episode in this special series on cortisol, where we will be looking to its effects on our cardiovascular system. Of course, we'll be back next Tuesday, same bat time, same bat channel, with a fresh new episode on embracing change. As we head out of this episode and into the rest of our day, I'm going to leave you with this reminder by Dr. Jason Fung, the world-leading expert on fasting and specialist in kidney function and diabetes. He says, Not coincidentally, both insulin and cortisol play a key role in carbohydrate metabolism prolonged cortisol stimulation will raise glucose levels and subsequently insulin. This increase in insulin plays a substantial role in the resulting weight gain.